put the motion first, Roger Kerr. Thank you, Dougal, and I'd like to um, start off with a quote from that wonderful television series that some of you may have seen um, on education vouchers. So here's Sir Humphrey Appleby. He says, the fact is that the only people who will like this plan are parents and the children. Everybody who counts will be against it. The teacher unions, the Labour Party, the Department of Education, and the educational press. And I think that remains true to this day. But it's strange, you know. I mean, if you think about it, um, in this country, we have vouchers. We have vouchers at the early childhood education level. Almost all ECEs are funded pretty much on the same basis. We have vouchers at the tertiary level, Arthur Graves Institution, Fitarea, for example, Horror of Horrors, it's funded on a voucher type system. And indeed, in this um, August Hall of Learning that we're in, universities are funded according to e EFTSs. So what on earth is strange about this particular concept? Some people like to make a lot of the, um, the ideology of this issue. Um, and I think it's very interesting when you consider where the most extensive uh, school choice systems are around the world. The list would include countries like Sweden, the Netherlands, Denmark, Belgium, Ireland, several US states, Chile, and Australia to a fair degree too. Australia uh, has a much more equal uh, funding of public and private schools than New Zealand does. And 30% of Australian kids are in private schools and that rises to 40% of the other secondary school level. But overwhelmingly, I suggest, that list of countries is um, very much social democratic oriented. Indeed, if you try to link this uh, to ideology of any form, I think you've got a fairly hard task. Um, here, and I can't put up the slide for a moment, but um, here's old busy whiskers Karl Marx, and this is what he said. He said, elementary education by the state is altogether objectionable. Defining by general law the financial means of the elementary schools is a very different thing from appointing the state as the educator of the people. So what Marx was on about was wanting to ensure that um, all children had a good education, and he saw the state as having a funding role there, but it didn't need to run the school system. Let's strip this all down. Um, I don't think there's actually a need for a fancy word like voucher. What we're talking about is simply equal funding of all schools, public, private, for-profit, non-profit, religious, secular, whatever, on pretty much the same basis. Uh, you can allow top-ups uh, over and above some uniform level, and you can allow elements for special needs. And that's exactly what happens in countries like um, Holland and Ireland. If you're the child of uh, a Muslim asylum seeker, for example, uh, no familiarity with Dutch, you will get a special allowance, but you may choose what school you want your child to go to. So this debate, too, is not essentially about public or private. The issue is about monopoly or competition. Um, whenever you should ask yourself, did a monopoly work best for those using its services? And overwhelmingly, um, in this country, we think of health and education as the last two, at different levels anyway, quasi-monopoly services. And the issue isn't about moves from public to private schools. It's about improving the whole system, and it's about improving it regardless of how well it's performing. So the basic case that we're putting forward is that we're interested in choice, choice for parents. And it's choices at the margin that matter in any market. It doesn't mean a wholesale desertion of people from poor schools to send some kind of signal. It doesn't require either that all parents are good choosers. You'll often hear the saying, well, parents don't always make the right choice for their kids. Well, uh, quite so. And so is that the case in so many other walks of life. I'd be hard pressed to get within 50 cents to tell you what the price of a litre of milk or a loaf of bread is. But I know that there are people out there who have a vital interest in working that out. And competition in the marketplace protects me in making my choices. Also, people will tell you that choice is always limited. Well, of course it is. You know, we'd all like a BMW or a Mercedes, maybe, but most of us can't afford them. Um, so choice is limited. Some schools can't expand for physical reasons apart from anything else. 
or they may not want to expand. You know, think of a GP practice that has taken um, enrolments up to whatever limit it wants. Um, or there may not be many alternatives. All of those things are true, but the goal should be to maximise choice. Then it's very important to note that there are three essential elements in this debate, and here I'm speaking of a very nice paper that Carolyn Hoxley, a black American professor at Harvard, gave in New Zealand a couple of years ago. She insisted that there's got to be supply flexibility. The school system has got to be able to respond. Uh, she insists that money must follow students. If students leave a the school, then there has to be a financial penalty and equally a reward for the school that is enrolling them. And there needs to be independent management of schools. You can't have a sensible um, school choice system that's run out of um, central bureaucracies in Wellington or anywhere else. And you need to keep that in mind when you're looking at empirical research into this area. It's quite true that um, many studies do report favourable effects. My reading of the literature is where there's something like um, a genuine open system of the sort that Hoxby is talking about, the effects are favourable. Systems like Holland score very well, for example. But often the findings are limited or they're unreliable because not all of Hoxby's elements are present. What you do usually find in these studies is that lower socio-economic groups benefit most. We saw that when we had the Thai scheme in New Zealand and its Maori equivalent. And what's also interesting if you look around the world is that there is steadily growing acceptance, slow but steady. For example, Florida in the US has one of its more notable um, voucher schemes. In the 2001 legislature, all but one Democrat opposed their scholarship program. Just this month, there was a further vote on it. One third of the Democrats supported it, half of the Black Caucus and the whole of the Hispanic Caucus. <coughs> However, I think a really important statement on this issue um, was made, interestingly, by the Catholic bishops of New York State a few years ago. They said, I quote, while a system of parental choice and school competition would have a positive effect in improving schools, this argument is beside the point. The purpose of a system of parental choice is to enable parents, all parents, to exercise their inherent right and responsibility to direct the upbringing and the education of their children. Even if all schools were high performing, they said, the rationale for a system of parental choice remains. The freedom to choose the education best suited for one's children is a basic right of all parents regardless of income. And I think it's very interesting that in the Swedish case, it was the European Convention on Human Rights that was very important in persuading public opinion in Sweden to go down a voucher route. And I find it interesting that my friend John Minto was once quite big on human rights. Indeed, I marched with him against the 1991 Springbok tour. But somewhere along the way, John, you seem to have lost the plot. <laughs> in New Zealand that most schools do a reasonable job, but I also have see a, a serious worry that our system may be in long-term crisis. We're looking at a, an aging teacher workforce, we're looking at unattractive salaries for teachers, we're looking at many of the best and brightest no longer going into teaching. I think we have to open our minds in the decades ahead to the possible need for much more radical uh, choices, much more radical reforms. And in the interests of teachers, actually, just as much as in the interests of students. I think we've got to think of things like much more self-management for schools, for paying teachers much more like professionals, for all kinds of uh, schools, for-profit, non-profit, uh, religious, whatever, Māori, whatever the community in general, whatever parents want. Equal funding, um, our side submits, is just a simple and an obvious step to facilitate those wider reforms. We say it's an idea that can't, whose time can't come too soon. Thank you.